Hello everyone and welcome to Trihackme's Advent of Cyber Day 16. If you have no idea what's happening, you're a regular viewer of my channel, you're not sure what Advent of Cyber is, Advent of Cyber is this free thing run by Trihackme where up until 1st December to Christmas they have cybersecurity challenges. They are completely 100% free, you can do them in your web browser, you can do them at your own pace, even if you're far behind you can catch up, if you participate you can win prizes, don't worry if you're far behind you can just come and catch up, there's like a daily prize and like main prizes as well. So well worth getting involved and having a go and you get to pick up some really neat skills, so far we've seen open source intelligence, smart contract, malware analysis, forensics, etc. So there's a lot of cool, interesting challenges in there. And again, it's completely free. Anyone can do it. You don't need to pay for Try Hack Me to get involved. We are on day 16. SQL eyes the king, the carolers sing. Set to have all their apps secures, the elves turn towards the one Santa uses to manage the present deliveries for Christmas. Elf McSkiddy asks elf exploit an elf admin to assist you in clearing the application from SQL injections. When presented with the app's code, both elves look a bit shocked as none of them knew how to make any sense of it, let alone fix it. We used to have an elf code, but he found the startup and helps us no more, said admin. After a bit of talk, it was decided. The elves returned, carrying a pointy hat and appointed you as the new elf code. Congratulations on your promotion. We're going to start the machine, and while we wait for it to start, we can do a little refresher on SQL. It stands for Structured Query Language. It's this language that's used to query databases, to get data out of databases. The database engine that this application is using is called MySQL. So MySQL uses and stores all of its stuff in things known as tables. You can think of like tables as a spreadsheet, like an individual spreadsheet. But MySQL can also be relational. So there's not just on Excel where you can have one sheet, you can have multiple sheets that reference data from other sheets. And to do that, they have columns here and rows. Each row of this table is a different toy and each column is a different piece of data about the toy, the date it was made, the quantity, the score, the creator ID, the name, etc. To actually query this, we do select. So select, star, all the data, from the table called toys and that produces this nice little table that we can view so that returns everything but what if we only want a few columns well we do select and then our column name so in this case name and quantity from toys you can see here we've got the names and just the quantities we're only getting like a little slice of the data from here we can also query the data within that table we can say okay we want the name and quantity but only where the quantity is greater than 20. So in this teddy bear is six, this animal farm is seven, they are, le they are less than 20, so they're not appearing here. This is only grabbing the robot, the potato, and the robber duck. Now, on a lot of app web applications, it is far more complex than this, because if you think about like how a social media app works, there can be like tons of queries running on a web page. But at the moment, we're just going to stick with these very simple ones. So we're going to have a look at some my, some PHP code. So PHP is a language that I really like. Actually, a lot of people really don't like me saying that. Um, PHP is well known as a vulnerable language. It's not necessarily vulnerable. It's just that it's like a lot of code is written that's quite old and does so in the old fashioned way. So this is the old fashioned way of writing queries. So we give it the server, in this case it's called database. So that can be like the IP address or the name. We give it the user. So this is the user it's gonna log on as. This is the password it's going to use. And schema here is just a fancy word for database. So in the Excel example, that would be like the name of your spreadsheet file. And then we do this MySQLI connect server username password schema. Um, and all that's really doing is saying, okay, connect to the MySQL database at this server with this username, with this password, and I want to access this data database, please. And then all we use is this nice MySQLi query function where we give it the database connection up here, and then we just give it the query as a string. So here we're doing a select star from users where ID equals one. But let's open up our attack box here and see what code this is actually producing. Go up to where I was before. 
So we can actually take a look at the web application. So I'm just going to use the clipboard functionality. I'm going to be using this a lot. If you want to access the clipboard, you want to click on this button here, go to your clipboard, paste it in. And then when you open up like Firefox or whatever on your attack box, you're just going to right click, paste and go. And then you just close the clipboard. You can just put it out of the way. So if we have a look, we can see this has elf PHP ID two. So this is grabbing the elf with the ID of two, which is elf McSkiddy. You've got some skills, but we also have the latest tools that they've done. We've got some like phone numbers and full names and stuff as well. So we can grab a different profile by just changing the ID. We change it to one, we get Santa. We change it to three, oh, whoops. We get another elf. And again, they all have this like latest toy. So how is this working? Well, we have our query, select everything from users where ID equals, and then we're saying, okay, stop that. We're going to concatenate. We're going to add something onto the end of this string, which is this get variable. So this just grabs a get parameter with name ID. So that's saying this thing up here. So that is get ID. So we finish off the query with that, like we tell it what to do, but that's what's making it vulnerable because it's taking untrusted input. How does this know that we should be seeing this? It doesn't, we don't, it like, there is nothing that's stopping us from typing in anything up there. And it's then gonna run select star from users where ID equals our garbage. And this is what's causing the SQL injection. So if we go into here, we do minus one or four. So you can see here that we're getting ID minus one or, or ID equals four. So because the SQL query being produced is now this one, there is no user with the ID of minus one. So instead it's grabbing the ID of four. So it's grabbing this last ID. And if we use this cool one here, because we've got the latest toys coming up as this table, we can actually abuse this. So if we go into this and we go into the clipboard and we now paste this in, we can see down here, we have the username and the password of everybody. And this is the thing about MySQL injection. This is why it's so bad to see on a real website because a simple MySQL injection can have like really bad side effects. But today we're not hacking this web application. Today, my friends, we fix it. So if we scroll down here and we use the username coder, and the password coder as well, we can see we're presented with the actual like code for this. So we can try and fix this ourselves. The way the code editor works, we open up the pages like this. We just control S to save them. And down here, we have a little helper. So when we press run checks, it's going to let us know whether or not the SQL injection will work. Will work. So there's a few different ways to prevent MySQL injection. The first one is by validating the data types. So we know this is this ID is supposed to be an integer. So we can just force it by using the intval function. So if I go into here and I do intval and just wrap that around the get, I go down here and again, intval, wrap it around. What we're basically telling the application is, hey, this has to be an integer, it has to be a number. If I do control S, and now if I try and run the checks, we can see no vulnerabilities. We've also got a flag that I'll submit in a second. So that's one way of fixing it. But as you can imagine, that's not necessarily a good way to fix things. It solves it for this challenge, yeah, but what if we do need a string? So I'm just gonna submit this nice little flag. And again, I'm gonna use this because I'm lazy. And scroll down to the bot. And this is, I think, flag one, yeah. Just gonna submit that while I'm here. Cool, so that's one. Now, if we scroll down to our prepared statements, you can see 
our next point, which is the search functionality. So this is search toys. This requires us to use a string. We can't change that to just be an integer. It has to be a string. So to solve this, we're going to use something called a prepared statement. And a prepared statement basically compiles the SQL. It says, hey, I'm not going to change this query. I'm not going to add anything else to this query. Like it's forcing it in a specific way. Um, so you can see here that we say, select everything from toys where name. And we say, hey, there's going to be a puzzle piece here. I'm going to tell you what that is. Or, hey, there's going to be another puzzle piece here. You can't escape from it. In this case, if we have a look at the attack in action, we can see these are every all the it's from the users, right? And you can see we're like adding something onto the end here. We're we're playing around with it. So to solve this, we're going to use prepared statements. And the way prepared statements work is instead of having a little variable here, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this and put it in above it. We're name like question mark. We're saying, hey, there's going to be something here. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. Or description like question mark. And a like in SQL just says it contains it. It's like a search. So what's the next step? That's the query. Now we can go down here and use, turn this into a statement. Now, statement is a really common term to be used, but it basically just means it's like one step ahead. So MySQL prepare, and we're going to use DB query. So this is where in the previous one, you can see the line below stops, right? It just says MySQL query, bam, result set. That's not the case for prepared statements because we have to tell it what the question marks are. So to do that, we're going to use MySQI bind parameters, and we're going to say, Okay, this is the statement, and we're going to add two things to it, string and another string. We're then going to say, okay, that string is going to be whatever variable and whatever variable. Now, if we have a look at this part here, you can see we needed to add these little percentage signs, and that's because those are they're like, they're saying, hey, I'm going to, there's going to be something else here. So if I go into here and I just set this to be Q. And if I go into this, I'm just going to sort this out so it's all in the right order. Okay. So what we're saying is this string will not change. It doesn't matter. Anything in here is going to be treated as a single string. It's not going to be able to be escaped. It can't change, right? Like it's not going to change. Now we've put in our bind parameters. We then need to do MySQI execute. And we're going to run that on statement. And then we need to load in the results. So same kind of idea as this, but we're going to change this to be MySQLi and then statement, um, yeah, result. And we're just going to put in the statement. So you can see this is the code. So now we've got it as our get result and semicolons at the end of every line. We can save it and see whether or not we've resolved it. So we're going to run our checks. And bam, the first one is found. Now we've got this one. So again, I'm going to copy this, grab it from the clipboard. Command C. Pop it in there. Bam. But there's still two more flags to find. There's two more vulnerabilities. So if we have a look at this one, we can see Animal Farm it's the items, so it's the toy.php that's causing it. So if we go into toy.php, you can see we've got another get ID. And we can go into here and do the same kind of int val or prepared statement. Prepared statements are usually the better option, but if it's an easy fix, we can stick an int val in here, again, forcing it to be an integer. And we can go into there and also make this an int val, just in case. And int 
Val. Again, this is not necessarily how a lot of like modern web applications are secured. Most of them use prepared statements. So if I run this, we've got that first one, second one. Bam, that is our third one. And grab it from the clipboard. Stick it in here. That one. So now we need to just do our login.php. And if you've seen any SQL injection, payload before you've probably seen this one quotation or one equals minus one go into our login and we can see why that's happening we're getting insecure values here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this into a prepared statement so i'm going to start with this query again i'm going to go into here and do my question mark and same thing for password turn that into a question mark. So we're telling it, hey, there's going to be a string in there somewhere. I'm then going to be a bit lazy and just copy the code. Because if programmers are anything, it's lazy for sure. And again, I'm going to go into the paste it in, bam. So it still has two strings, but I'm going to tell it, it the two strings are username and password. So first thing here is we create a paired prepared statement with the database we were using before and the query is the same. We just removed the strings. Instead, we put in question marks. We're binding the parameters of this statement here with a string and another string. So this is the first string and this is the second string. So we give it the variable username and the variable password. Instead of doing MySQL execute, we're going to instead do MySQL I get result and just stick in statement. So I'm going to press save. I'm going to run the checks. First one, second one, third one, and fourth one. So I'm going to go into here, copy it, go into this, bam, done. So that is day 16. Join me tomorrow for the final day that I'm going to be teaching you all. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, everyone.